Keep tuned now for Father Knows Best. Tomorrow evening, you'll enjoy the fine comedy programs of Phil Harris and Alice Fay and Bob Hope. Bob's special guest tomorrow will be two folks long familiar to all fans of the Bob Hope Show. For tomorrow night, Miss Vera Vague and Mr. Jerry Colonna will be in the Hope Spotlight. It'll be like old times to have these three fun makers back together on one show. So be sure to tune to the NBC Radio Network tomorrow for laughs galore on the Bob Hope Show. Then stay tuned for Phil Harris and Alice Fay in another mirth-filled 30 minutes of comedy. That's tomorrow on NBC. And now it's Father Knows Best on NBC. <laughs> now listen to Father Knows Best, transcribed starring Robert Young as Father. <laughs> Welcome to Springfield and another half hour visit with the folks in the white frame house on Maple Street. Sit back and enjoy life with the Andersons. Kathy, Bud, Betty, Margaret, and Jim, as the head of this typical American household, again sets out to prove that father knows best. most Americans, a bank is a fairly familiar institution. It's the place where you keep your money. It's the place where the guard in a uniform rocks back and forth on his flat feet and watches you with a suspicious eye while you try to find the line that will move the fastest. Never do. However, there is one American by the name of Jim Anderson living in Springfield who feels that his particular family holds the national, if not the international record, for knowing less about the functions of a bank than any other group of humans on the face of the earth. How did he reach this conclusion? It all started one Saturday morning when Jim was at his desk in the den going over his checkbook. Like this. 62.50 less 12. That was on the 23rd. Uh, 9.75 to Snow's Drugstore on the 24th. <coughs> 2480 for groceries, uh, 650 to A.G. Clark. Bud! Yeah? Stop that confounded racket. What does it sound like? It sounds terrible, and I'm trying to work down here. Does it sound like a duck? I don't know what it sounds like. Just keep it quiet. That's what it's supposed to sound like, a duck. All right. A mallard duck. All right. A mallard duck that's lonesome. <laughs> All right! <laughs> Bud! Okay. Oh. Now, where the heck was I? Are you in here, dear? Yeah, what is it, honey? What are you doing? I'm trying to balance the checkbook to the accompaniment of a flock of lonesome ducks. <laughs> ducks? I don't know. Bud's upstairs making strange sounds. I swear, this is the noisiest house. Sounds fairly quiet to me. But wait till the next flight of mallards go over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what I came to tell you, dear. We're going out tonight, and the cleaner is bringing your suit back today. You'd better give him a check. A check? What for? You paid the cleaning bill just last week. I did? Honey, don't you keep track of these things. That's what a checking account is for. So you have a record of what you've paid. I know. I just didn't remember paying it. Well, look right here in your checkbook. The stub will show when you paid it. It'll be right in here with the... Hey, what's this? These two are blank. Oh, there were a couple of checks I wrote. Must have been in a hurry. I, I didn't take time to write on the stub what they were for. You didn't put down the amount, either. Uh, well... No date, either. Uh, well, I was in a hurry, dear. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Margaret, how are you going to tell who you paid and how much if you don't write it down on the stubs? Well, I wrote it on the check. <laughs> but we don't have the check. Well, the bank can tell us. They keep records of all those things. Honey, they can't keep track of who you give your checks to. Then I think we should go to another bank. Margaret. <laughs> Bud! That was geese. 
Can you keep it quiet, Bud? Wild geese. You'd better stop it, Bud. You'll have a wild father. Anyway, you're familiar enough about banking, Margaret, to know that your check stubs are your only record of what you've paid. I know, dear. So I forgot to write it down on the stubs. Look on the back of the checkbook. I sometimes jot things down there. Back of the checkbook? Yeah, what's that written down there? Uh, call Alice about the prunes. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I've got to do that. Margaret. Oh, me. (laughs) Bud! I'm coming, Dad. You don't have to come down. I just... I swear I'm going to take those stairs out and put in a ladder. (laughs) How do you like this one, Dad? Oh, Bud, what in the world are you doing? Does this sound like a moose? It sounds like a cow with her tail caught in the barn door. (laughs) Joe and I are going into business. Moose calls. Well, that sounds like a nice practical enterprise. Must be literally thousands of people with a burning desire to call a moose. Yeah, we're going to make all kinds of calls. Good. Why don't you make one down the street somewhere? I'm trying to do you a little see, work... You the idea is you make a noise like an animal, and then another animal hears it. Yes, I get the idea. Like the moose, for instance. <laughs> now, a moose, he hears that, and he says to himself, Hey, man. I thought this was a moose. Yeah. Well, he says to himself, Hey, moose, what have we here? Yeah, I know, bud. So he comes running to take a look. I understand the principle, bud. Now, why don't you go down to Joe's house and... We're going to sell kits. Kits? Yeah. You buy a kit, make your own moose call, duck call, or whatever you want to call. We're going to make kits for calling anything you want. Well, that's fine, but I... Would you like to invest some money in the company, Dad? Uh, Not right now, bud. We've got a good name for it. We're going to call it the Irresistible Noises Corporation. Well, fine. Fine. When I see irresistible noises preferred on the stock exchange, I'll consider it. We only need about 20 bucks to get started, Dad. Uh, not today, bud. But, gee, you, you got your checkbook right there. All you have to do is write out a check. I can see that a certain innocence about the cold facts of checkbooks tends to run in this family. Huh? But you don't just write out a check when you want money. I know. You gotta cash it. <laughs> True, but there is also another factor involved. Trivial, I grant, but nonetheless to be accounted for. That is the little matter of having money in the first place. I just remembered. One of those checks in my book I wrote for Kathy's dress. Well, good. How much was it? I think it was seven eighty-five. All right, we'll put that down. Or was it eight seventy-five? Honey, there's a difference. These amounts have got to be exact, or I can never balance my books. Why do you have to balance them? so that my figures here in the book coincide with the amount in the bank. I have to know how much money we have left in the account. Why don't you call the bank and ask them? But banking doesn't operate that way. Oh, that other check was to the milkman, I just remembered. What was the amount? I think I have it written down on the telephone pad in the kitchen. Oh, this would make a bookkeeper's hair turn gray. (laughs) How about the 20 bucks for the company, Dad? It's a gilt-edge investment. Uh, Not today, bud. I could give the money right back to you. Oh, how do you figure that? Easy. I'll get a checking account for the company, and I'll give you a check for 20 bucks. But if you give me the $20 back again, you're out of business. Why? Because you don't have any more money. Sure I do. I gave you a check. I still have the 20 bucks. (laughs) You don't either. I take your check down to Snow's Drugstore and cash it, and I have the 20 back again. Not my 20. Then where did I get it? From Snow's Drugstore. (laughs) Bud, look. Father! Yes? Can you come up here a minute? I'm busy right now, Princess. What is it? I'm upstairs. I can't come up there. In my bedroom. Bud, will you tell her? He's busy! Never mind. I'll come down. Dad, maybe I could get a loan from the government. Yeah, drop a line to the Treasury. (laughs) <laughs> Father, look what Aunt Harriet sent me for my birthday $25 Well, that's fine, Princess Try to hold on to it At least until this afternoon I don't see any $25 dollars 
She didn't send it in cash, stupid. It's a money order. Money order? It's much the same thing as a check. Hey, that's pretty good. Where do you order the money? <laughs> you don't order the money. You said it's a money order. Where do you get the money? Well, you... Where do you get the money for this, Father? Well, let's see. That's a postal money order. You can get it from the post office. Who sent it to the post office? Nobody sent it to the post office. Then how are you going to get it? Bud, this is like a check, as I said. It's a promise to pay. It's the same as cash. If I went to the post office and promised to pay, would they give me 20 bucks? <laughs> no, Bud. Aunt Harriet bought this money order in Chicago. That means that the post office there promises to pay to the bearer $25. So she's got to go to Chicago to get the money. <laughs> what you kids don't understand is that the transfer of funds in business is managed on a credit basis. Like a charge account? Well, something like that. I'll explain it to you sometime. Hi, Daddy. Hello, kitten. What's going on? Nothing, shrimp. We're talking about money. That's good. Can I have my allowance, Daddy? Well, I don't have the change with me right now, kitten. Why don't you give her a check? What's a check? I'll take a check for my allowance. What'll I do with this money order, Father? If I were you, I'd put it in the bank. I thought you had to go to the post office. <laughs> no, just take it to the bank, open a savings account, and they'll take care of the whole thing. Now, run along, kids. I have a whole stack of book work to do here. What about my allowance? I can't go to the bank today, Father. They're closed. If you're looking for a place to put your money, I've got a red-hot proposition. I can imagine. It'd be better than putting your money in a bank. You give it to them and it just sits down there in an old safe. No, bud, that's not true. In the first place, Betty, if you deposit that money order in a bank account, the money's never actually in the bank. Where is it? They just tell you it's there, huh? <laughs> if you put the money in, then why isn't it there? It's there if you want to draw it out. But the money isn't actually there. Oh, that sounds like a crooked deal. <laughs> but I'm trying to explain... Well, I took bookkeeping in school, and I never understood why, if you put money in the bank, that the money wasn't really there. It's very simple. You see... Well... <laughs> Wait a minute. I know what we'll do. I don't think you can explain it, Father. I'm not going to try to explain it, Princess. We're going to open a little bank right here, so you kids can see how it operates. Who's going to run it? I will. I'll be the bank. We'll call it the uh, Anderson First National Trust and Savings. Hey, Mommy, come here. Daddy's going to be a bank. How can you do it, Father? What's this about someone being a bank? Father's going to do it. And you're going to be the banker? Certainly. All it takes is a few minutes of bookkeeping, and I can't think of a better way for the children to learn the basic principles of banking. I think this family circle bank idea is a real good thing. Wouldn't be surprised if it caught on around the country. Might even... Make a national magazine. When do you want to start, Father? Why wait? Let's begin right now. The doors are open. Ladies and gentlemen, the Anderson First National Trust and Savings Bank of Maple Street is, as of this moment, officially in business. <laughs> Act two of Father Knows Best in just a moment. There's wonderful radio entertainment all day long when you keep your dial tuned to this same NBC station. You'll enjoy such fun-packed programs as the Bob Hope Daytime Show, Tommy Bartlett's Welcome Travelers, Jay Stewart with It Pays to Be Married, and a host of others. Be sure to keep your dial set to the NBC radio network. You'll hear your favorite daytime dramas on NBC, too. Such perennial favorites as The Road of Life, Pepper Young's Family, The Right to Happiness, Backstage Wife, Stella Dallas, The Woman in My House, and Young Widder Brown. All of these well-liked daytime programs are yours for the listening Monday through Friday on the NBC Radio Network. Well, there's a new bank in Springfield. It's called the Anderson First National and is the brainchild of Jim Anderson, who is also president, vice president, chief teller, and head bookkeeper. At the present moment, the assets of this novel financial institution amount to exactly $30, $25 deposit by Betty and Kathy and Bud's respective allowances. 
Minus one check for 19 cents written by Bud. It's Saturday evening now, and Jim and Margaret are in their room dressing for an evening out. This uh, tie look all right, honey? Fine. Just straighten it a little. Mm. <laughs> you seem to be enjoying something. Oh, just laughing over the way the kids responded to the bank idea. Did you see Bud when he came upstairs? Walking around with his checkbook in his shirt pocket? Mm-hmm. Oh, he's a big operator now. They're going to learn more out of this than they could get in the month of Sundays at school. By the way, dear, do you have money enough for tonight? Oh, I have 15 or $20. Is this your money or the bank's? It's mine. That's the only thing wrong with the bank at this point. The depositors haven't put in any cash. I just have Betty's money order and Bud and Kathy's allowances on the books. And uh, speaking of the books, I wish you could remember that other check you wrote. Who you made it out to and what it was for. I've been trying to recall. Uh, oh, I'll think of it. You'd better hurry, dear. We're supposed to meet the Williamses at 6.30. Plenty of time. Father, I just talked to Ralph, and he wants me to go to the church bazaar with him tonight. Well, good for Ralph. I'll need some money. All right. Make out a check, put it through the bank. I left my checkbook down in the den. Are you coming down? Be there in a second. Now, you see how much better this is, honey? With the children writing checks on their own accounts, they're going to think twice about spending money. Mm, could be. Though it didn't seem that Betty devoted much thinking to the matter. Well, just give her time. Father! Coming, princess. I'll go down and handle this financial transaction. You come down when you're ready, honey. I'll just be a minute. Checkbook. I haven't seen it, Princess. The bank is only responsible for the depositor's funds, not his checkbook. Oh, here it is, up on the bookcase. These little books are cute, Father. Where'd you get them? Oh, there's some old ones I had kicking around in the desk. Now, how much do you want to draw out of your account? Oh, five dollars. All right. But remember, it's a lot easier to draw money out of the bank than it is to put it in. I know. Uh... To cash, five dollars. I'm Betty Anderson. There, how's that? Mm, that looks all right. Hey, is the bank open? For a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> You'll uh, have to get in line. Now, there you are, Miss Anderson, five dollars. Thank you. Now, what can I do for you, young man? I want to get a loan from the bank. <laughs> A loan? Joe and I are starting a business. We need some capital. Not to make more of those moose calls. No, we gave up that idea. It's only good during hunting season. We got a real practical business that's good all year round. Well, a bank is always interested in aiding any new and constructive enterprise. What sort of business are you planning, Mr. Anderson? We're going to buy up old automobile inner tubes and make hip boots out of them. <laughs> Boots out of inner tubes? Not a bad idea. Yeah, if you can find enough people with curved legs. <laughs> we figure we can make $10,000 the first year with no trouble at all. Hmm, how much do you think you'll need to get this hip boot factory off the ground? About 10 bucks. Mm hmm. Well, this is the way a bank operates. We take the capital placed with us by our depositors and put it out in good interest bearing loans. You'll have to pay interest on this loan, you know, Mr. Anderson. That's about 6% per annum. Oh, I don't want any annums. <laughs> <laughs> that means 6% a year, Dopey. Oh, well, uh, that's okay. Do I get the loan? Well... Wait a minute, Father. Do you mean you're going to lend him the bank's money for that silly business? Well, that's the way banking operates. But you'll be lending him my money. That's all right. It isn't either all right. I'm not going to let him buy old inner tubes with my money. <laughs> now, just a minute. The loan is going to be secured. Uh, by the way, Mr. Anderson, when a bank lends money this way, it has to have some collateral. Oh? Do you have any collateral to put up? I don't know. What is it? <laughs> Collateral, lame brain, is something you put up to guarantee that you'll pay the money back. What do you have in your company that you could put up? 
Well, all there is in the company is just me and Joe. <laughs> I could put Joe up. <laughs> oh, brother. It uh, isn't customary to put up one of the partners of a company as collateral for a loan. We'll have to have something tangible. What's a tangible? What's a tangible? Father, it seems to me this bank is catering to an extremely illiterate clientele. Oh, he's learning, Princess. That's the whole purpose of this idea. Now, tangible collateral, Mr. Anderson, is something of real value. Joe's pretty valuable. <laughs> <laughs> to his folks. No, I... <laughs> I mean something like a camera or a bicycle. Uh, I guess I could put up my bike. All right. Now you just sign this piece of paper here. This says that you agree to pay back the $10 plus interest and that the bank becomes the legal owner of the bicycle until the loan is repaid. Okay. <laughs> now, are you getting the idea how a bank operates, bud? Yeah. But what happens if... Well, I, I mean, in case I can't pay back the 10 bucks. Then you lose the bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> Father, you mean I have to take over that old beaten-up bike of his for my ten dollars? No, Princess, the bank takes it over. You can still draw out your money any time you want it. But how can I draw it out if you've loaned it to Bud? Well, until the bank liquidates the bicycle, your deposit is secured and payable from other deposits. What other deposits? Well... I'll get it. Hello? Oh, hi, Janie. Yeah. Do they have to have it tonight? Gee, I'll try. Maybe I can borrow it from Father. Uh-oh. Don't let her do it, Dad. Make her put up some collateral tangible. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. See you tonight. Problems, Princess? Father, I need $50. It's for our Glee Club trip to Omaha next month, and they have to have the cash in advance. Don't do it, Dad. You'll have to take over Omaha. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have $20 in the bank. That means you'd have to borrow another 30 That's a pretty big loan. I could pay it back out of my allowance. Where's the collateral? Look, you've done your banking. Get out of line. Daddy, I want to cash a check. Get in line, Shrim. You better close the doors of the bank. <laughs> Your mother and I have to leave here in a couple of minutes. I have to leave too, Father, but I have to pay Mrs. Lacey for my Glee Club tickets tonight. All right, you need a loan of $30. I want to cash a check for my $2 and a half. Will you wait? I want to get my money before it's all gone. <laughs> now, just a minute, Kathy. What do you have to put up as collateral, Miss Betty Anderson? Oh, Father. Business is business. All right. I'll put up my record player. That beat up old thing. Don't lend my money on that, Dad. Mine either. You don't have any money left in the bank. Hey, I do too. My allowance. I still got two fifty in the bank. I want to write a check, Dad. Now, look, you can't just draw your money out. You said we could. Yeah, you said we could write checks any time as long as we had the money in the bank. Yes, but... Father, I have to leave. All right, uh, sign the paper. The bank becomes the legal owner of the record player until the loan is paid back. Get the records, too. Father, tell him to stop it. Bud, stop it. <laughs> The record player's no good without the records. Look, I'm running the bank. Boy, I want to get my money out. Here's my check, Dad. Give me two fifty cash. All right, all right. Two fifty for me too. Well, don't grab it out of my hands. Please, Father. I've signed all your stingy old papers. A thirty dollar loan and my twenty dollars in cash. Princess, I don't have fifty dollars in cash. In fact, I don't have any cash left. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure glad I got my money out of this bag. <laughs> Are you broke, Daddy? No, I'm not broke, but you've cleaned out all the cash I had with me. I'll give you a check, Princess. On what bank? On the bank downtown. Oh, okay. You'd think you kids didn't trust me. 
All right. There you are, Princess. Thank you, Father. Well, I'm ready, dear. Are you? I guess so, but... Bye, Mommy. Bye, Daddy. I'm going over to Patty's. We'll pick you up over there when we come home, Angel. Well, are you finished, Mr. Banker? Yes, I'm finished. Bye, everybody. I have to meet Ralph. Betty, just a minute. What is it, Father? Where is that record player? Oh, I think it's over at Janie's. Over at Janie's? It is, unless she loaned it to Marcia. Bye! Dad, I'm, I'm going over to Joe's. I'll see ya. Bud, hold it. Yeah? Where's the bank's bicycle? Oh, I don't know. I think Fred Cleaver's got it. So long. Now, wait. You... <laughs> Something wrong, dear? Margaret, I've been swindled. <laughs> by my own children. I take it the bank isn't doing too well. I can't understand it. It was such a good idea. How much capital do you have on hand? Capital on hand? Are you kidding? The bank is broke and I'm out $40 of my own money. I don't even have any collateral. <laughs> well, it was a good try, dear. But possibly you're not cut out for the banking business. I just can't figure out how they did it. It wasn't intentional, I know, but they cleaned me out. I haven't a nickel. We can't even go out tonight. Yes, we can. How, may I ask? I remembered what I wrote that check for. It was for cash yesterday, and I still have $20 left. Well, bless you. Shall we go, Mr. J.P. Morgan? The Andersons will be back in just a moment. Every weekday evening, you'll want to set your dial to this same NBC station for America's number one comedy family, Fibber McGee and Molly. And it all adds up to fun-filled listening. Be sure to make it a regular habit to listen to the mirth-quaking adventures of Fibber McGee and Molly every night. And keep up to the minute on the news of the world by tuning to Morgan Beatty as he reports the latest happenings from throughout the globe. Also a five-times-a-week feature on NBC is One Man's Family, the intriguing adventures of mother and father Barber and their bewildering offspring. Listen to all of these programs every weekday evening on the NBC Radio Network. Well, due to circumstances beyond the control of the president, the Anderson First National Bank has raised the white flag and gone out of business. And this evening, a few days later, Jim is still nursing a few lumps suffered in the big financial crash of Maple Street. I don't mean to keep harping on it, honey, but you'd think the kids would have understood what I was trying to do and given me a little cooperation. Well, don't worry about it. Let's just chalk it up as a noble experiment and let it go at that. But they got nothing out of it. Absolutely nothing. Maybe not. But think how much you learned about trying to teach children. <laughs> Went right over their heads, completely. Is that you, Bud? Yeah, it's me. What in the world do you have in that box? Well, here's Betty's record player. She wanted me to bring that home for her. Well, good. And my bike's outside. Good for you, Bud. What's all the other junk in the box? Well, this is collateral. Joe and I gave up the hip boot business. We took the ten bucks and started a bank. <laughs> You see, honey, like I said, they learned a real lesson. Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Father Knows Best is an NBC Radio Network production in cooperation with Cavalier Enterprises. In our cast were Helen Strom as Kathy, Gene Vanderpile, Rhoda Williams, and Ted Donaldson. Father Knows Best, based on characters created by Ed James, is written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers, directed by Arthur Jacobson and transcribed in Hollywood. This is Bill Foreman speaking. Tonight, play Truth or Consequences with Ralph Edwards on the NBC Radio Network. Mm -hmm.